According to the theory of common descent evolutionists, tetrapod vertebrates are considered to be more closely related to Osteichthyes, the class of bony fishes, given that they serve as ancestral precursors before the evolution of tetrapods. Given that tetrapods consist of bones and evolved from a common fish ancestor with such bone features and was possibly low fin-like, it is more likely then that tetrapods share more closely related ancestry with that of ancestral bony fishes as opposed to the chondrichthyes that is the class of boneless fishes that only have a skeleton made up of cartilage rather than true bones. Therefore, under common descent, we will expect to find more similarities in ray fin and low fin aquatic group species since they have features of what evolutionists call bones. On the other hand, chondrichthyes, sharks, rays, skates, and so on, should have less similarities to tetrapod vertebrates, according to common descent, since one, they lack bone homology, and two, appear early, earlier in the fossil record, about 450 million years ago, prior to the bony fishes that evolved around 420 million years ago. With this definition of the cladistic method, let's run through some examples so you can see how to apply it and find some transitionals yourself to show creationists when they demand some. Suppose we wanted to find out how land tetrapods came about using cladistics. To do so, we can go through the general cladistic definition and simply replace each variable with the creatures that fit the criteria of traits that we set. We know that tetrapods are chordates with calcified bones that have a low limb skeleton design, lungs for respiration, and four developed limbs with which they use to support their own body weight. These features can be our traits A, B, and C, respectively, where tetrapoda is taxon C. We can use any creature within tetrapoda to represent it, but let's just use a salamander. Taxon A is thus defined as chordates with calcified bones and a lobe limb skeletal design. This taxon is called Sarcopterygii, and since this is taxon A, and we're trying to find the transition between taxon A and C, it ought to be represented by some creature that has trait A, yet doesn't have lungs nor well-developed limbs. The living coelacanth subclass of fish, Actinistia, fit this criterion quite well, so we can use them as representatives. Thus, we come to our testable definition for a transition, taxon B, that should fall between water-dwelling Tarcopterygians and the land-dwelling tetrapods. The definition follows as, accorded with the calcified lobe limb skeletal structure and lungs, but does not have the limb structure necessary to walk like true tetrapods. Lo and behold, there are actually a few creatures that we know of that fit this definition, usually within the lungfish taxon. We can see that most lungfish species rely on their lungs to respire, yet they're all relegated to the marine environment, lacking the limbs necessary to carry their own weight on land. The lungfish thus gives our evolutionary hypothesis that tetrapods are derived from pre-tetrapod Sarcopterygians some valid standing. But why stop there? If we understand that evolution is an ongoing process, then there should be even more transitionals we can find either before the lungfish appeared or afterwards before true tetrapods appear. And the fossil record indeed yields these mid-transitionals, oodles of them tracing virtually the entire transition from Sarcopterygian fish to amphibious tetrapods. With such a transition so well established with ample evidence, as we've also established earlier, it's therefore quite likely that this reconstruction of evolutionary change is indeed accurate. And when we translate this nested hierarchy into a cladogram, we can show that all creatures in the tetrapod group are certainly likely to be descended from Sarcopterygian fish. Here we are going to focus on the elephant shark, which is basically a boneless fish chimera. Now, even though the elephant shark is considered a chimera, it's actually still considered to be a monophyletic group in relation to sharks as they by definition fall under the taxonomic class, chondrichthys. In addition, elephant sharks have a very tiny genome size compared to other boneless cartilage fishes such as sharks, rays, and so on. However, despite its tiny size, they share strong genetic similarity with that of world sharks, as would be expected if they were monophyletic. Those elephant sharks are a great representation to that of sharks and other cartilage fishes. However, truth is stranger than fiction. A genome analysis of elephant sharks, a chimera cartilage fish that falls under the taxonomic um, chondrichthys class, as you can see here, reveal an astonishing discovery. It turns out that they share a large portion of their genes to humans and other tetrapod vertebrates, like mice, much more in common than, their, than the close relatives of tetrapods, bony fishes such as the zebrafish. The paper is entitled, Survey, Sequencing, and Comparative Analysis of the Elephant Shark Genome. Here, researchers compare the genome of the chimera elephant shark and compare it to that of the human DNA. To their surprise, they found that humans actually share strong genetic similarity to cartilage elephant sharks, much more significantly than the tetrapod's close relatives, the bony vertebrates like zebrafish. 
as coded in the paper. Here, researchers used a DNA library of 14,828 elephant shark genes and compared to the human DNA library, which they used a total of 11,805 human genes. Elephant, elephant sharks contain only 84% of those genes. For comparison, out of the 14,828 shark genes they used, they found an 80% match of genetic regions to that of humans. When they compared the number of matched genes to humans with that of bony fishes, they discovered that the similarity was less than that of certain bony fishes. Now, despite the fact that humans and other tetrapod vertebrates share strong genetic similarity with cartilage fishes, typically the chimera elephant shark, it was also found that those conserved genes were missing in bony fishes, as well as in invertebrates, as quoted from the paper. Loss in the Tullius lineage. In other words, these genes have disappeared in raven, low fin fishes, but appeared earlier in chondrichthys, which appeared first in the fossil record right before the Tullius lineage began, and also in tetrapod vertebrates, which appeared after the Tullius lineage. Basically, these missing genes have appeared earlier, disappeared in between, and reappeared again later when tetrapod vertebrates were around, even though those genes were even absent in invertebrates. Interestingly, it also turns, that hum turns out that humans have more sensitivity with sharks as opposed to their closely bone fish relatives, which brings up an interesting question. How is it that humans and other tetrapod vertebrates, which presumably were more related and evolved from bony fish vertebrates, ancestors have more homology with boneless aquatic creatures. Indeed, such similarity is hard to explain by common descent, since it is hard to see how cartilage fishes can share more genes with humans than that of bony fishes. The only explanation these scientists have for why humans bizarrely share strong genes with sharks is by them pursuing that those genes were lost in the bony fish lineage, but then eventually reappeared before and after again after when cartilage fishes and tetrapod vertebrates were around. Of course, since common descent must be true, it must be that this was the case. Rather than rely on the evidence, these scientists sway away from speculative, wishful thinking and how explanations to save the logic of common descent. Even though they observe a similarity they sh should not exist, they still hold on and defend the common descent as if it was never falsified or at least conflicted. Interestingly, there are more similarities between humans and sharks than just mere genes. They also seem to share very sh long strands of non coding DNA as coded here. So not only do humans and elephant sharks share similar coding genes, but they also share portions of non coding DNA that are more than 200 base pairs long, and even twice of that than found in the genome of bony fishes. Just how exactly did all these coding and non coding regions get there in the human and chimera shark genome when they don't show a common divergence together? Hmm, it could be that instead of trying to explain this by common descent, there was most likely a common designer, where this common designer used the same genetic blueprint but modified it slightly in between mammals, tetrapod vertebrates with that of unrelated and distant species like carded lich fishes like the elephant shark. This is a lot similar to that recent video where I mentioned about humans and other modern mammals, birds and reptiles sharing similar genes to modern marsupials species like kangaroos. How can humans and other mammals share similar genes to marsupials and something even more unrelated like a chimera shark, which presumably evolved 400 million years ago or so? Trying to explain this by common descent is extremely difficult. So it seems that despite all odds, it turns out that tetrapod vertebrates share more molecular homology, that is genetics, with boneless fishes like sharks than evolutionists will predict for finding such homology in bony fishes. So from a molecular perspective, we find that tetrapods are grouped more together closely to boneless fishes like sharks as opposed to bony fish groups. So rather than these scientists constructing a consistent phylogenetic tree that evolution, evolutionists so strongly believe in, it has generated conflicted trees where one based on morphology groups that more closely to bony fishes while the other based on molecular data, that is the genes, the genome, groups them to boneless fishes. What we have here instead are two conflicted phylogen phylogenetic trees with opposing evolutionary history, a clear indication of failure for common descent. Thanks for watching.